In the year 2032, weapons will be outlawed and only museum cases will have guns. That's the scenario facing Sylvester Stallone. And his nemesis Wesley Snipes in the science fiction thriller Demolition Man. The two stars exchange gunfire throughout the movie. But their high-tech shootouts are all illusions, carefully staged for the camera by highly skilled professionals who practice strict safety procedures refined over years of filmmaking. Today, we'll explore Hollywood's fascination with firepower, from early westerns to the carefully choreographed shootouts of The Godfather. It's ready, aim, fire as the masters of mayhem unload their weapons on movie magic. It's well past midnight, and the cameras for Demolition Man have yet to roll. But then, this is no ordinary shot. This is the scene where our two characters, Sly and Wesley, kind of face off. This is the very beginning of the film, and we hope it gets off with a bang. That's the plan. For Joel Silver, producer of such action movies as Die Hard and Lethal Weapon, bang means bringing down this massive structure, a former municipal utility building in downtown Los Angeles. A crew of true demolition men will blast the building with dynamite. To ensure the moment looks explosive enough on film, the special effects team will enhance the blast by igniting 230 gallons of gasoline. The movie blasts off with a tremendous bang. And for the rest of the film, Stallone and Snipes exchange rounds from practically every weapon in the history of firearms. The battle continues progressively this way until Phoenix comes around. For this sequence, director Marco Brambilla stages a classic Western-style shootout in a museum of the future called the Hall of Violence. Creating the weapons effects is a large team supervised by Joe Ramsey. For a picture as spectacular as this one, team effort is essential. You can't do it alone. I mean, when you have 50 guys, there's no way you're going to be in every place at once. You have all your key guys. And uh, any job I give any of them, I have total confidence it's going to get done. It's going to get done right. It's going to be done safe. Such confidence comes from hands-on experience acquired over the years. For despite Demolition Man's futuristic setting, its scenes of gunplay are an old Hollywood tradition. In the first westerns, the illusion of bullets striking objects was created by shooting pieces of chalk or marbles with a slingshot. Through the years, movie makers have used weapons to add firepower to their stories. Weapons that have often come from Stembridge gun rentals. Founded by J.S. Stembridge and director Cecil B. DeMille in 1920, the Stembridge collection of firearms has been showcased in hundreds of Hollywood productions. From the airplane-mounted Lewis machine guns that brought down King Kong, to the minigun used by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. Today, third-generation Sid Stembridge continues the family business. The weapons that we have here in Stembridge Gun Rentals encompass basically guns from the early era of match locks and wheel locks, which would have been the 1560s, 1580s period, all the way up to the present with all the different automatics. Most of our guns are converted to fire blank ammunition only. We do not make or use any live ammunition here at all. The blanks have powder in them just like a regular shell would have, but the shells themselves are crimped closed without a bullet on them. So when you fire the shell, nothing leaves the barrel. So there is just an explosion that occurs without a projectile leaving. It wasn't always this way. In many movies of the 1920s and 30s, filmmakers used real bullets. Expert marksmen fired live rounds, sometimes aiming only a few inches from the actors. Actor James Cagney finally tired of this dangerous practice. 
In Angels with Dirty Faces, he refused to let machine gun bullets shoot out glass around his head. When the scene was filmed without Cagney, bullets ricocheted into the wall where he would have been standing. Obviously, live ammunition was far too dangerous. In the 1940s, effects men developed powder charges enclosed in small cardboard cylinders that could be used safely near actors. Today, these strictly regulated miniature charges are known in the business as squibs. So to buy these squibs, you have to have a class one powder license and a federal license. Mike Minardis is the pyro effects foreman for Demolition Man. He uses a pre-scored piece of balsa wood to demonstrate how a squib gives the illusion of a bullet hit. Take your charge and you put a little bit of Fuller's Earth for dust effect. And a little bit of plastilina, that's to back up the hit. If you weren't to put this in there, then it would take the way of less resistance. Mike secures the bullet hit with tape, then connects the detonating wire to a battery to trigger the device. The Demolition Man effects team will use hundreds of squibs for the Hall of Violence sequence. Can you feed this wire through there? In this shot, Wesley Snipes' character is to blow away a few museum displays. Okay, now this has to go on the hand side, right? The effects crew carefully rigs the mannequins with the tiny explosive charges. To create the illusion of bullets shattering the glass, they attach a small device called a glass popper to each case. A squib inside each popper will fire a piston to fracture the tempered glass into a million pieces. To prepare for this combination of bullet hits and glass poppers, crew members wear protective masks and earplugs. While bullet hit squibs produce a dynamic and controlled effect, the rigging time limits their practicality. In this shot, Sylvester Stallone's unarmed character must dodge bullets from Wesley Snipes' rapid-fire machine gun. To create the illusion of bullets striking the walls behind the star, Joe Ramsey will shoot spark hits using an air-propelled pellet gun. It's your basic paintball gun. CO2 is your pressure for power. Uh, Single-shot pump. Sights because we uh, when this one we're using this one we're going for real direct hits We could have you as the actor or say have an actor's head here and basically feel pretty comfortable shooting right beside him To create sparks the gun fires breakaway capsules containing a tiny quantity of a combustible spark ingredient called zirconium Bird gravel is added to provide friction when fired the impact ignites the spark similar to a match striking a rough surface what we shoot generally is combinations of dust and spark. A spark they always love for the ricochet look. A dust shows an impact. So you generally go dust, spark, dust, spark. Mike Minardis demonstrates the gun's effectiveness. Just pull this back. By pushing on the trigger lightly, you can single shot it. Or by holding it down, you can fully automatic. That's it, that quick, 10 hits. Concern for safety continues with the actor's prop weapons. Before every take, the prop man inspects each firearm before allowing the actors to shoot blanks. To complete the illusion of mayhem, the effects team adds a touch of smoke, plus fire from a flame bar. The set is ready for an explosive shootout. Okay, here we go. Ready? And action! What did I say? I'm a blast from the past. In the film, Stallone's character appears to narrowly escape a round of bullets. But not everyone gets away so easy. These, of course, are just dummies. For a character to receive a bullet wound on film, another kind of pyrotechnic artistry is required. In Hollywood's earliest films, gunshot wounds were rarely visible. In those less graphically violent times, actors simply clutched their wounds during death scenes. But by the 1970s, effects artists commonly used blood packs to add dramatic impact. Each individual was rigged with backup steel plates and bullet hits. As they were to go off, they couldn't slap them because of the steel plate. Effects masters A.D. Flowers and Joe Lombardi 
greatly advanced this craft in Francis Ford Coppola's gangster epic, The Godfather. By this time they had made explosive bullet heads that was flat and round, and it was very effective. For his death scene as Sonny Corleone, actor James Caan was rigged with dozens of squibs and blood packs. These were wired to a battery which ignited the squibs. The crew even attempted to rig pull-out plugs filled with blood to Sonny's face. People are conditioned to it so much that it looks realistic to have them blown out. For Demolition Man, Mike Minardis prepares body hits for an upcoming shootout. So what we're going to be doing here is putting three blood hits in a police jacket. And that's to simulate exit wounds. Mike selects the spots for the blood hits and pre-scores the exit holes with a razor blade. What that's doing is when you put the charge in there, you want it to blow a little hole this big instead of splitting the material in a big X. And then once you're done with that step, you can set the coat over, start making the blood hits. I use condoms because they don't uh, rip when the stuntmen are in fights and stuff. The latex sack holds two to three teaspoons of artificial blood. Depending on how big the hit, you can fill it up to whatever size. Try and get all the air out so they lay flat. Mike next prepares the explosive charge. Because the police jacket is fairly thick material, he uses a medium-sized flat squib. It goes in this brass shield and creates a little shape charge. With it being in here, all the force is directed straight out. With a leather pad, the actor, when it sits on here, can't feel anything. The blood sack is taped to the bullet hit to form a small package. When the squib goes off, it would blow this out. You get the spurt of blood, and then the rest of the blood here bleeds down. The blood hit is then placed over the pre-scored area in the jacket. The last thing we do is put a uh, neoprene pad against the leather pad. That's it, that one's done. The Demolition Man effects team will go through hundreds of blood hits during the six months of filming. This scene is a futuristic underground area known as the Wasteland. Second unit director Charlie Paterni oversees the filming of today's action-packed scenes. At this point in the story, actor Roy Oswega meets a bloody demise. The effects team carefully rigs body hits into Roy's costume. A wire for each squib runs to a separate screw on a controlling device called a nail board. A master nail called the striker is hooked to a battery. When the striker touches the metal connector on the board, the completed circuit electrically ignites the explosive powder charges. To enhance the moment, effects man Andy Seabock shoulders a spark gun to spray the area around Roy. As soon as the shot is completed, the effects team quickly removes the wire rigging. The next setup is for one of the most dangerous scenes in the movie. Bill Aldridge is the effects foreman for this sequence. In this scene, uh, Wesley Snipes comes in with a futuristic weapon, and he's got Sly dead to rights in the, uh, with the gun. A player from down below fires a shotgun blast up. It pops this cable, throws Wesley to the side, he drops the weapon. When he drops the weapon, it hits the ground, fires up, and blows out an area right into here. In the meantime, this platform swings around, and they go off, hanging onto the edge. The bridge is suspended by pre-rigged cables. This is a Holix cable cutter. This actually severs this cable in half. The explosive device is contained within the cylinder, so there's no sound other than a snap. To heighten the moment, the effects team strings sparking squibs along rails of the bridge. As with the bullet hit squibs, these spark hits are electrically detonated from an off-camera nail board. What I'm doing here is what we call a quick time. You 
car like that, so if we have to reload, they can pull apart real easy and we can get in there and jerk it off real quick. As shooting time approaches, stunt doubles for both stars are cabled onto the bridge railing. Every detail is carefully reviewed to ensure a safe flight. But a moment this big always contains an element of danger. Background! The bridge drop provides the film with a heart-pounding jolt. But the most electrifying special effects are still to come. Demolition Man lives up to its title with a finale that will destroy an enormous three-story solid steel set. In this glistening prison, convicts of the future are cryogenically frozen. And the fireball is coming from where? Behind. The effects team thoroughly reviews each moment of destruction with director Marco Brambilla. This is uh, Joe Ramsey, our world's finest uh, special effects, physical effects technician. And this is Mike Minardi's uh, world-famous surfer and part-time special effects <laughs> technician. The kidding belies the real concern for safety in filming this explosive sequence. For this shot, Joe applies a coating of fire-resistant gel to Sylvester Stallone's stunt double. Behind the scenes, Gene Rizzardi readies tanks of carbon dioxide. This gas will create the illusion of cryogenic fluid blasting the prison set. The control vents for the gas are triggered by an electronic keyboard. The next deal is over here, guys. We're against the bar with slide. At this point in the story, the two protagonists will duel to the death as the prison set self-destructs around them. What we're uh, doing right now is we're setting up for this shot that involves uh, Simon Phoenix holding a very exotic laser beam device. And he's aimed it at uh, Spartan, which is a Stallone character. And uh, behind Sly, as he jumps, it cuts a huge swash of white-hot metal into these prison bars. So what we're doing is sequencing these squibs across these prison bars so that as soon as Sly crosses the frame, we'll be triggering the bar just behind it. And when we combine it with an optical effect that's to be done later on computer, uh, it'll look like there's this white-hot plasma beam uh, just following Sly. Many of the film's futuristic weapons, like this magnetic accelerator gun, were created by giving an actual firearm a cutting-edge look. But the laser device used in the climactic battle is one of a kind. A 21st century ice pick, this magnesium thermite laser is to blast a hole in these prison bars. To simulate a laser hit, the effects team uses flash paper, a thin sheet covered with flammable powder. Strips of the paper are wrapped around the sections of the bars where the beam is supposed to strike. A sparking squib is attached to each bar in order to ignite the paper. For safety, the detonating wires that run to each squib will be connected last. This prevents any of the charges from being set off prematurely, an important precaution. As a quick test reveals, the flash paper deserves its name. To create the illusion of the beam cutting through metal, the effects team replaces a section of prison bars with one that's been pre-cut. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this with flash paper and paint it so that it matches the bar approximately. And when the Z17A goes off, it ignites the flash paper. We'll do it on a nail board in sequence so that it'll look like a laser that cut through the bars. With flash paper concealing the cutout segments, Touch-up painter Rocky Poloni expertly masks the bars so that they appear frosted with frozen cryogenic gas. As the effects crew ties in the wiring to the nail boards, the camera crew rehearses the shot. Because of the large amount of time it takes to set up this shot, every detail is reviewed in order to get it right the first time. Still, a last-minute problem arises. The jets of carbon dioxide are so powerful, they extinguish the flames on the bars. To remedy the situation, Joe quickly applies a coat of flammable rubber cement. And the cameras roll.
As the video playback reveals, the crew got a perfect shot. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Actually, we shot it with three cameras. So I have, out of the three cameras, I have two that are extremely good, one that's okay. I have enough to make the cut. Now I'm happy, they're happy, so we're happy. That one worked out just right. This is one take Ramsey. Whether it's creating gunfire or the effects around it, it's the skill and experience of people like Joe Ramsey, Mike Minardis, Bill Aldridge, and Charlie Pacerni that keep cast and crew members safe while ensuring that filmmakers get the required shot. Proving once again that a hard-charging movie relies not on ammunition, but illusion to generate thrills. You get so many people that'll come on and they'll say, you know, were you a demolitions expert in the military? And you go, no, and you get, you got to remember, they really blow things up. We simulate. Even when the movie's called Demolition Man, it's the film's special effects team that gives an action spectacular its spark of movie magic. Thank <laughs> you.